All right, welcome to week three of Cine 230 Remix Cultures. I am the real Dr. Dre, all up in your area. You're probably sick of uh, hearing me, seeing me on video, but guess what? It's, it's worse in person, so this is actually better, at least for y'all. Um, but, um, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty close to our first exam, which will be uh, next week, which will cover everything through uh, today, which includes the lecture and discussion, as well as uh, general questions from the film um, Rip, a Remix Manifesto, which you'll be watching uh, uh, during this module. Um, so I have asked you to read through a little bit of Matt Mason's Pirate's Dilemma, uh, The Pirate's Dilemma, uh, How Youth Culture is Reinventing Capitalism. He takes a pretty interesting look at piracy. Again, one of my least favorite words, but um, looking at how, you know, people uh, have embraced the idea of unauthorized uses, basically, to create new and um, you know, productive innovations, uh, creations um, by appropriating or using other people's ideas without their permission. So he goes, runs the whole gamut uh, through this book, looking at everything from like pirate radio to 3D printing to graffiti uh, to, you know, uh, sampling and making beats out of other people's music uh, to uh, you know, machinima and, um, you know, video game modding, all those things he kind of broadly looks at and looks at how the concept and the construct and the, the habits and behaviors of, of pirates, um, broadly defined, right, helps to uh, actually push innovation um, in this world. So it's a pretty, pretty interesting take, pretty easy book to read. I want to spend a little bit of time going over chapter three, which is what I had asked, I had asked you to read, which I think sets up a nice, um, I guess, preamble to the film we're going to watch, uh, Rip a Remix Manifesto. So I'd like to kind of just go over some bits from this chapter and, and kind of um, discuss them broadly. Uh, to give you some, you know, context to the film and just to, you know, see what I kind of pulled out of the book that, that I thought was important. Um, so I, I just, you, you know, cite some quotes here, right? The remix is the most power, one of the most uh, powerful forces in pop culture today. I mean, we kind of got into this on day one, right, where we watched everything as a remix. And if you really look at popular culture, um, you know, the video games you play, the movies you watch, the music you listen to, the dance moves you have um, or do, um, the, 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 your style, like how you rock your, your clothes, you know, how you rock your gear, you know, um, you know, if you think of everything that makes up sort of popular culture, language, slang, you know, all that stuff, it is, it is so indebted to this concept of, of remixing, you know, and you know, popular culture, mainstream culture, whatever you want to call it, is so predicated on this concept of, of remaking the past. And, and, and you're always doing this, you know, um, when you're like, oh, I'm going to, you know, use this word, you know, in this context, you're reappropriating the word, you know, you're remixing the use of a word or you're creating a portmanteau where you're combining a couple words or something like that. But you really see how, you know, remixing is so important to pop culture. Um, you know, in America and around the world. Um, he says, original ideas are often historical concepts mashed up and served as something new. A remix is much more than the sum of its parts. I think if you really think about what, he, what he's trying to say here is that when you remix something or you make something out of, you know, um, other people's expressions or other people's ideas, right, the end product of the remix is greater than what each of those ideas or expressions or things that you remix are alone and unto themselves. So when you, you know, it's just like if you think about it like, um, you know, if you're cooking, right, if you're making a recipe or cooking based on a recipe, right, you have all the ingredients, right? Well, the ingredients, you know, are valuable, right? They're the raw, they're the clay, they're the raw, the raw ingredients, right, that you use to to, to cook with. And so they have value unto themselves, but when you put them together and you, you know, you measure things out right and you cook it right, you know, what comes out of the oven, right, the cake that comes out of the oven is ultimately greater 
than what went into making the cake. And that's really what he's kind of trying to say with, with a remix is, is like everything that incorporated all the, the ingredients in the, in the remix, while they have value alone, they're more powerful when they're combined together um, and put out there in this new way, in this remixed expression or this remixed innovation or something like that. And he says the remix is a conscious process used to innovate um, and create. So I think some people and creators, like, they uh, indirectly remix or appropriate or borrow, but some very specifically, you know, not necessarily credit their influences, but observe and acknowledge and utilize their influences. They don't deny that, you know. And for a lot of people, they've come to embrace this concept that they're, that maybe they're not like inventing, you know, in a vacuum or a cave or creating in a, 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 you know, in a cave uninfluenced by society. They embrace the fact that they've had all these, these great things out there that have impacted their, their creativity and their innovation. Remix is about taking something that already exists and redefining it in your own personal creative space, reinterpreting someone else's work, right, um, in your own way. I think this is incredibly important. Um, I mean, the way that, you know, I've always kind of defined originality is how you, you know, you take something from the past, you add your own salt and pepper to it, you shake it up, and you make something new out of it, you know, um, that's relevant for now, you know, because um, the past is the past, and some stuff from the past is amazing, music, movies, culture, innovations, etc., but you know, what happens when you take them and you do something really creative with them and make them relevant for now? And I think that's really what it is. It's you're reinterpreting someone else's work in your, in your own way. Some people may say this is a lazy way of creating, and some people accept that that's actually how you, how you create. And I think the more you, you sort of accept that, you know, not that you're really appropriating or, or stealing or whatever, but that you sort of accept it and acknowledge that that's how you create. You, you actually make better, you make better things because you're less worried about, um, you know, biting someone else's style or, you know, creativity and you're more interested in how that can impact what you do and make your work better and make the, you know, what you make better for society.